Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is not a new version of question and answer time, if you're wondering. Uh, but we have a major announcement to make and uh, something that uh, all of us, uh, and particularly the people that are standing behind me, uh, want to just really thank them for working hard with us and with a number of people throughout the city, uh, realizing that our city's become more expensive, uh, working families, and particularly those who earn minimum wage, have struggled uh, longer hours to try to make ends meet. Uh, recognizing that uh, we've had a tremendous uh, effort being given to create and sustain jobs in the city, and we want to continue doing that. But beyond the jobs, it's also about how much you make and how much you can get home so that you can take care of your families and pay the high rents and all the other things that costs uh, sometimes beyond our control are increasing. And I'm grateful that uh, uh, last year we made this announcement and I repeated it uh, earlier this year at the uh, State of the City address that we uh, thought it was the right time uh, to make a significant boost to the city's minimum wage for our lowest paid workers. Uh, I pledged to work with all of the different businesses, uh, small and big, uh, with workers themselves, their representatives, with economic experts, uh, with the members of the Board of Supervisors, to try to reach a consensus around raising the minimum wage here in the city. And this is one of those great issues that we can all unite around and push forward to uh, the residents of this city with our San Francisco values intact and a shared belief that uh, someone who puts in a hard day's work really re uh, deserves a respectable wage. And we've heard uh, input from all of the different affected uh, sectors of our community. Uh, earners and people who pay the minimum wage, uh, we've heard from nonprofits as well as small businesses and large businesses. And today, the current minimum wage at $10.74, uh, there has been a cross the board agreement that that just doesn't cut it. That's not enough. And uh, even though voters passed the minimum wage that we currently experienced in 2003, uh, the, new, uh, the current minimum wage, if left unchanged, would be at $11.03 per hour. That would be effective January 1st of 2015. The consensus measure that uh, we are proposing to have to the voters, and I'll be the first, but I know everyone behind me is going to uh, be very proud to have this very public discussion with other businesses, small and large, with our nonprofits, with residents, with voters in San Francisco. Uh, we will uh, have before the voters a proposal to increase San Francisco minimum wage to the following numbers in the next few years. Beginning on May 1st of 2015, we propose uh, $12.25 per hour. And then each of the next years, beginning on July 1st, uh, for example, July 1st, 2016, it will be uh, raised to $13 an hour. And July 1st, 2000. Uh, 17 will be $14 an hour, and July 1st, 2018 would be $15 an hour, and then for the consumer price index to kick in thereafter for those years. Uh, let me thank uh, all of the members of the Board of Supervisors who are standing uh, today at this podium. They're all here. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Laura Tyson from UC Berkeley, who helped us navigate very complicated economic uh, issues. Uh, there's a lot of stakeholders in this, uh, big and small businesses, labor unions. I want to thank all of them for being at the table and uh, talking with us through all of this. Workers' rights groups have been invaluable to this process because they have been talking directly to workers in various different languages to make sure they understood what this meant. Um, Nonprofit groups, we've had a very large number of hours committed. And I want to thank the number of nonprofits that came to the table that uh, make sure that we were taking care of them as well, because they are invaluable to the employment 
of all San Franciscans as, as much as business is, all in an effort to really try to get a consensus approach to this. I want to thank the Coalition for Fair Economy and the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Sometimes they may be speaking uh, times at, at the opposite ends, but particularly on this matter, uh, they came very close together with all of us to make sure that uh, our interests uh, were united around this consensus. A lot of hard work to build consensus in this city, uh, I'd be the first to say, but I've been proud uh, as we have done so on a number of occasions, whether it was pension reform, uh, whether it was uh, the housing trust fund, uh, whether it was uh, the number of uh, general obligation bonds that we've had the past in the past, uh, we've had a united effort. And I want to again say that uh, this is well worth it when you can get a consensus to raise the minimum wage. And it will be, in fact, the highest minimum wage in this country. Uh, we will remain progressive on this. And I want to specifically uh, thank our supervisors and I know uh, as of last night Supervisor Jane Kim spent some extraordinary amount of time along with uh, representatives of the Coalition for Fair Economy and our other partners but I want to say in particular that uh, we wanted at the beginning to work with the supervisors and I'm very glad that Supervisor Kim uh, took up that challenge because she put in the quality hours to uh, work this way through uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce her, uh, not only has helped us do this, but uh, she's been on the forefront of quite a number of issues lately, and I just want to say thank you for the time that you're putting in for our city. Supervisor Jane Kim. Thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor, and I can't tell you how happy I am to be here today. San Francisco is yet again setting the bar for workers' rights and an equitable economic growth agenda, and we are doing it together. I'm proud to be here with the mayor, the entire Board of Supervisors, labor, our workers, nonprofit leaders, and the Chamber of Commerce, united to bring forward a proposal to the voters of San Francisco, the most progressive and strongest minimum wage proposal in the country. In this proposal, all San Francisco employers will be paying $15 an hour by 2018. There will be no tip credit or health care credit. This is pure wages that San Francisco workers will be bringing home to their families. Despite setting the successful precedent in 2003, which set the highest minimum wage in the country then, in the last two years in particular, we have been seeing a widening income gap between our lowest paid workers and our highly paid workers. In times of economic prosperity, no one should be left behind and everyone that works to make this city and economy so successful should be able to benefit from this prosperity. When this city, when the mayor and the board committed to creating more jobs in San Francisco, it was never about just creating any job. It was about cre creating high quality jobs with, with, health, with health care, paid sick days, which not only allow our workers to continue to afford to live in San Francisco, but support their families and also to thrive here in the city. I also want to acknowledge labor and the workers that are here today. They have been clear in leading initiatives to both protect and respect the work of our lowest wage workers. Labor and workers fought for universal health care, paid sick day, and no other city has considered no other, no other city at that time had considered these land, landmark legislations. Now cities are joining San Francisco's ranks and implementing similar policies. San Francisco has a lot to be proud of today. Not only are we pushing the boundary to respect the work of our workers within the boundaries of San Francisco, we are impacting the lives of workers throughout the country. Our president made a call to raise the national minimum wage, but he said if Congress and Senate can't do it, that localities should take power in their own hands. Our commitment again today to the strongest minimum wage proposal in the country is simple, clean, and clear, and I'm confident that the voters of San Francisco will proudly vote for this measure in November. And again, I just want to thank everyone involved. There are so many folks, um, the mayor, um, the mayor's office, nonprofit leaders that were always committed to getting to 15 but wanted to talk about how we could get there, and of course, labor and workers who have been waiting a long time for this raise. Um, and even as difficult as it got, and everyone swallowed a pound of flesh to make this happen, no one ever wanted to walk away from bringing a unified proposal to the city. And I'm really proud that we were able to do it today. Thank you.
The Coalition for Fair Economy has been working the streets lately, and you've seen them out on all the street corners. We were very cognizant of that. And let me be clear, now that we've made this agreement, there are no two different measures going before the public to vote on. There is one measure, and it's because we were able to contact and uh, start the negotiations with uh, this coalition. Uh, there were compromises that had to be made. There was reality that needed to be checked in on all sides. And we were very fortunate uh, that we were able to catch each other uh, before we went too far to make sure that we can check in. And uh, the basis and the uh, results of that, uh, to be sure, is that there are no longer two measures that might be considered before the public. That was a possibility up until a few weeks ago. Uh, but uh, I am glad to introduce Shaw San Liu, who's been representing the Coalition for Fair Economy, and she and her staff and her volunteers have been out there talking to workers, uh, making sure that uh, the uh, economy wasn't going to get away from them, but also making sure that they made contact with us as well. Uh, Shaw San Liu. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Shasan Liu and I'm here representing the Campaign for a Fair Economy. We're a broad coalition of community organizations, grassroots groups, and labor unions who have been working together and collectively represent over 100,000 workers in San Francisco. Um, our coalition is made up of the organizations that fought for the original 2003 uh, minimum wage increase, which set the bar across the country and which has been modeled by cities and states across the United States for both minimum wage, paid sick leave, as well as health care laws. Um, and we're very proud of that work, but as has been mentioned by both Mayor Lee and Supervisor Jane Kim, um, the minimum wage as it stands now is uh, far too low to help workers meet the rising cost of living in San Francisco. And 10 years later, the same struggles that compelled us to raise the minimum wage in 2003 um, are, are at, at, work, at work again today in San Francisco. Um, we see that workers are falling behind when it comes to paying the rent, paying basic living expenses. When the average one bedroom apartment rents for $2,775 in the city of San Francisco, working families cannot afford to survive here, let alone thrive, raise families, and um, have long-term uh, futures in the city. So many in our communities are homeless, are working two to three jobs to make ends meet, are doubling up, living in SRO cramped rooms with shared bathrooms and kitchens, or uh, living, you know, four, five, six people in one bedroom apartments to be able to pay those rents. And that's just not right. San Francisco can do better. San Francisco should not be leading the country as the number one fastest growing wealth divide in the nation. That's not the legacy we want to leave. And that's why we are so um, pleased today to be standing um, with this broad coalition, including uh, working with the mayor's office, the Board of Supervisors and other groups to reach a consensus measure. Um, our consensus measure um, will raise the bar by getting all workers to $15 in 2018 and uh, ensure that no minimum wage worker in San Francisco goes without an increase. Over 100,000 of our lowest paid workers in San Francisco will benefit from this increase. It puts hundreds of millions of dollars into workers' wages, which means money going directly to local businesses to fuel our economy, drive consumer spending, which is 70% of our local economy. And I wanted to put in perspective what this means for an actual worker. The Campaign for a Fair Economy is made up of organizations that fight every day to ensure that the lowest wage, wage workers in San Francisco get a decent chance at surviving and thriving in San Francisco in many ways and in, around many different policies, including housing and health care and education. And for the people that we represent, in May, uh, May Day of 2015, they're going to see a pay increase that equals about $240 uh, a month for a full-time worker. That's $200 that means the difference between making rent or not making rent, buying groceries, paying for health care expenditures. It is very real money to, these, uh, to, to the folks in our community. And within four years' time, as we get to $15 an hour, that is putting nearly $9,000 a year into the pockets of the lowest paid workers in San Francisco. And that is a significant um, 
boost. It's not everything, but it's a significant step towards reducing that income gap and helping workers have a chance to survive in San Francisco. Um, so the campaign uh, for a fair economy really just wants to recognize and thank Supervisor Jane Kim, uh, Mayor Ed Lee, for your leadership starting from last year uh, in really raising uh, the this issue and bringing the city together to fight for a unified measure on minimum wage. And we really want to thank the low-wage workers, the fast food workers, who were the very first ones to raise the banner for $15 an hour, the fast food workers across this, the country and other low-wage workers who have decided to put their livelihoods on the line and risk their jobs to demand decent wages and a dignified life. Um, and those are the people that we think um, are driving the movement across the country to raise labor standards for workers. And we're very proud that San Francisco can join that fight and continue to help lead that fight. Um, I also just want to, you know, say that we know for, for, for our workers, sometimes $20 makes a difference, you know, between being able to uh, stay out of a shelter or be able to pay the bus fare to get to their job or to be able to make the rent. So this is just very significant. Um, and we're confident that the voters will support this measure. Um, finally, I just want to say that we're also very pleased that the mayor's office and Supervisor Kim have made a commitment that um, in increasing the minimum wage, we're going to continue to make sure it's enforced and that this new law has meaning for workers on the ground um, and that we have the resources and the tools needed to make sure that uh, employers, uh, that minority of employers that often uh, may try to you know, cheat workers um, are going to be held accountable to this new law and that we'll have a level playing field for all businesses. Um, thank you very much. I'm very proud of the city. As you've learned recently, our unemployment rate went down to 4.4%, and that's one of the lowest uh, anywhere in the country, and certainly in the state of California. Uh, we want to continue employing as many people as possible in both the private sector and the public sector, in nonprofits as well. And a partner in doing so, and wanted to make sure that you knew that working on this particular topic was extra sensitive for the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Yet it was something I think that they were proud of that we in fact could reach a consensus with their interests as well. So let me introduce uh, a partner in this, Mr. Wade Rose, who's here representing the San Francisco Chamber of Commerce. Mayor Lee, Supervisor Kim, supervisors who are here, we the business community is pleased that a single uh, ballot measure will be appearing uh, in November to uh, ask the folks of San Francisco whether they want to support an ex uh, expansion and growth in the uh, minimum wage. The issue about the discussions we were involved with and have been involved with for months is uh, kind of comes down to the observation that uh, compromise is a very precious ideal that has to be exercised if it's going to remain healthy. We think that with the consensus built up uh, around this measure, which uh, the residents will be voting on, we've reached that compromise. The, one of the um, kind of facts of San Francisco, which is not well understood because we are uh, uh, blessed to be a headquarters city, we're blessed to be a city where a huge amount of new influx of high-tech folks are coming in with their companies, is that 80% of the approximately 600,000 people who are employed in San Francisco are employed by small and medium businesses. Businesses often less than 20 people. 80%, it's, so, it's not the Twitters or the Dignity Healths or the PG&Es. It's the folks who have gone, who've put themselves on the line to uh, put a company together, a business, make employment available, who are impacted by this the most. So our concern as a business organization was to make sure that the process, which was agreed to in the compromise, reflected their concerns from a business perspective, which mean whatever the amount was, it had to be phased in. And whatever the amount was, it had to be within the means of people to afford as business owners so they could uh, write paychecks to people who live and work in San Francisco. So I think we've arrived at that venture. It's going to be... Uh, up to the people of San Francisco, obviously, to make a decision. 
but we are pleased that the consensus is reached. We are pleased for the work of uh, Mayor Lee. We are pleased with the work of Supervisor Kim and the other supervisors and the uh, entities within San Francisco who are pushing this issue. So we look forward to uh, November. Thank you very much. You know, uh, as I said earlier, consensus building is not a very easy task. And I just wanted to give a shout out to somebody on my staff who's been working extra, extra hours uh, to keep uh, my texts and emails alive, phone calls alive, to make sure I engage with everybody that was uh, in this room and more people that represented them outside this room as well. And that's Jason Elliott. So I just want to say thank you, Jason, for the work you're doing here. And then I'd like to just take this opportunity to invite uh, any of our other elected officials or members here at the podium to uh, express their viewpoints on this uh, building uh, uh, of a consensus and then to get ready and then to get ready for good and if I speak one word all right uh, but again uh, I think all of us look forward to the discussion we will have with the public the voting public I think this is an exciting discussion we'll have, something that I think this entire city will be proud of. So again, thank you very much for everyone here.